Hey there, this is MathCamp321 presenting the solution to question number 11 of the Park Algebra 2 practice test. Uh, this question is a trigonometry question and it tells us that the apothem of a regular polygon is the distance from the center to any side and then they illustrate that. And you may have learned this in your geometry course. If the length of the apothem remains constant at 10 inches, the formula for the perimeter of a regular polygon as a function of the number of sides n is p of n is equal to 10 times the tangent of 360 divided by 2n times 2n. As the regular polygon changes from a pentagon with 5 sides to an octagon with 8 sides, what is the approximate average rate of change in the perimeter? Well, you'll notice at the top of the slide that I put in red that there's a pitfall here, and that is to check the mode of your calculator. Uh, this function that we're going to be working with, this P of N function, deals with a trig expression in which the angle is in degrees, which we can tell by the degree symbol. So before you even start the problem, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. And we're going to need to make at least two calculations here. Well, two with the calculator. We have to figure out what P of 5 is, the perimeter when there are 5 sides, and we also have to figure out the perimeter when there are 8 sides. And then once we're done with these two calculations, we're going to need to calculate the average rate of change in the perimeter by treating it like a slope question, and we'll get to that in the, th in the third stage. So for now, let's get prepared for the calculator by plugging in 5 for every occurrence of n. Okay, so I have my two functions set up respectively, first plugging in 5 and then plugging in 8. And now I'm going to get the calculator and actually evaluate, making sure that I'm in degree mode. Okay, so I have the calculator queued up here, and I just pressed mode, and I want to make sure that I'm in uh, degrees. And I wasn't, I was in radians, so it was definitely worth the time to do that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the calculating screen, and I'm going to plug in 10 and then tangent of 360 divided by 10. Well, that's just going to be 36. Close the parentheses times another 10. And I'm going to press Enter, and I get 72.65. I'll round to the nearest hundredth, 72.65. And this is going to suggest an ordered pair. And the ordered pair is when I plug in 5 as my input, my output is 72.65. I'll put a little box around that because that's probably the most important part of that part of the problem. And now I'm going to cue the calculator up again. And now I'm going to do the same thing, 10 tangent. Now 360 divided by 16, I don't know exactly what that is, so I'm just going to put the calculation in. 360 divided by 16 and then times 16. And this is 66.27. And that suggests the ordered pair 8, 66.27. Now the actual question we're supposed to answer is right here. What is the average rate of change in the perimeter? So we have the perimeter at these two specified values of n, the number of sides. The perimeter at 5 sides is 72.65, and the perimeter at 8 sides is 66.27. And the average rate of change, this signifies to me that you're going to treat it like a slope situation, which is rise over run. So I'm going to do the change in y over the change in x. So I'm going to do 72.65 minus 66.27 all over 5 minus 8. Now I know the denominator for that is going to be negative 3, because 5 minus 8 is negative 3. And now I'm going to grab the calculator again to do the uh, subtraction of those decimal numbers. So I'm going to do 72.65 minus 66.27. And I get 6.38. And I'm going to divide that by negative 3. Divide that by negative 3, and I get negative uh, 2.13 if I'm rounding to the nearest hundredth. Now you'll notice that none of the answers is negative, but they do start with the word decrease. 
So the negative slope would indicate a decrease in the overall perimeter. And if we look at choice B, it says a decrease of 2.13 inches for each additional side. So that's exactly what we got when we did the calculation. So I'm going to choose answer choice B.